All right then, Adam. So what we're discussing today, mate, we're discussing esports, the esports audience, um, and how it's kind of a misnomer. And I wanted to start, if you don't mind, buddy, by quoting a certain respected esports journalist. Executives who think they can tap into the esports audience don't really understand the industry because there is not an esports audience. Do you know who said that? No. It's you. Oh, fuck. <laughs> is it? It's you. It's you and your des- Dexerto or Deserto, however you fucking say that outlet. As, um, as you were reading out, I was like, oh, he's spitting. This guy's spitting. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, the, that's from an article you wrote in January this year. This um, year? I think so, yeah. January 2022. Is oh, that shit. not when you wrote it? I left that year as well. I mean, I left that month. <laughs> That year, fuck me. It is, it is that, that year, year, like it's Jesus Christ. Years sorry, ago. I left that month, so I can't remember writing it. Yeah, yeah. Sounds about right. <laughs> well, I remember. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the last ones you wrote, wasn't it? What's um, the article called? Esports doesn't exist or something, or the esports <laughs> audience doesn't exist. Which, so I wanted to start there because I feel like that pretty well summarizes our both of our um, beliefs on this. And it could well be the title of this video, to be fair. It's yeah. probably it's a controversial title, so. Well, that, I mean, that's what was good about it. I remember it sparking a bit of conversation at the time, didn't it, on LinkedIn and that. I swear there was a lot of people like, I mean, definitely got a good response. I remember that. But yeah, no, so I read it before again, and um, I just really agreed with that. So I'll read it again. Executives who think they can tap into the esports audience don't really understand the industry because there is not an esports audience. That's so true because I think the main point that we both want to make is that each esports title is completely different first of all and the esports audience is so is spread so disproportionately so you've got in the west let's just stick with the west for now you've got league of legends counter strike in the ci in the cis region you've got like dota 2 which is still massive um i think it definitely was about a year ago um and now obviously you've got valorant <clears throat> so that's four now um and I'm going to go into a like, quote, not to be too up my own ass, but I'm going to quote a, a couple from my own article that I wrote, Free Sports Insider, mm-hmm. like just over a year ago. <clears throat> and uh, things have changed a bit since then because I was basically talking about how all the value, even though we see it as the esports audience, and that's how executives who don't really know anything about gaming see it, mm-hmm. the esports audience, like the, you know, the, the fucking much referenced new zoo stat of 495 uh, million esports fans uh i think that was in like 2020 or something um but that's that's just spread so thin across oh well it's spread disproportionately so you've got a couple of titles that have got a massive audience and then loads that have got a dead small audience either way there is no esports audience they're completely different sports that's how it needs to be seen um and i've there's also a link that i need to find in a second um, that essentially suggests, sorry, it, it, it studied the crossover between esports titles as well. Um, okay. And it's just, it, it's, it's like some of it is like 10% or less. You know, like, I think you, you mentioned this in your piece as well, like somebody that's into League of Legends in Asia is not the same demographic as somebody that is into COD or watches Warzone or, you know, watches Pro COD um or, or pro gears of war and just fucking loves flaming people and like loves the the testosterone fuel kind of thing um yeah they're trying, trying to activate to those two audiences with the same piece of content exactly. the same strategies is not gonna exactly. it's not gonna be effective is it yeah exactly so i guess that's just where i wanted to start give give people at least my view to begin with and like yeah Basically, I think we both agree, don't we, that the idea that there is an esports audience is a bit misleading, and it can lead to maybe inflated valuations and things like that. And you would th- you would hope that most executives know that when they look at it, and they still make investments based on that assumption and makes that. But a lot a lot haven't. Like, there's been a lot of investments you would presume that have just seen the numbers and been like, yeah, we want to be part of that industry. It's not really an industry. That's just a useful thing we have, a useful framework to um, to approach the space. But it's like I said, it's not really an industry, is it? No, but 
Um, while I yeah, I would I would like to think most like most people go away from thinking that there is an esports audience now. If you look at like even the the comments in press releases when they announce new investments or a new partnership, they'll say they say like the esports audience is highly blah blah blah, yeah. and we want to yeah. tap into yeah. this audience. But it's like like if if you think you can tap into like I don't know, say five hundred million people, right? And then you go and sponsor. I don't know Atlanta phase, just Atlanta oh, yeah. phase. Exactly. Look, you're, you're not you're not getting that 495 people. You're maybe getting access to outside of the phase connection, maybe 200,000 people. Mm-hmm. So if you go into that thinking, oh, I'm hitting millions of people with this shit, like the the amount of people that are going to engage with this is going to be sick. Uh, it's it's not the case. Yeah. I feel like I, I feel like one of the uses of generalizing esports so much is for the well, I can, I can, I've tried to look at the positive of it. One is good to track growth of the industry as a whole, as much as you can through news reports and stuff, right? Like it gives you a rough idea maybe of what's what. It's mm. useful to track growth, just like it's it's useful to track reading consumption or like book consumption year on year. But like, you're not going to compare a book written uh-huh. by Ross Kemp versus one written by exactly, Douglas yeah. Murray or something. You know, like it's just yeah. not the case. But like, it's still interesting to know how many people are reading. Same as it's interesting to know how many people generally or estimated wise are enjoying esports or engaging in some way. Like that, that is useful. Yeah. In agreed. that sense, but like you can't use it as gospel by any means. No. And also, it's good to disingenuously frame, um, I guess, the, the capability of a partnership or like if you get involved with us, then you're tapping into this highly sought after esports audience which you know very young demographic but like they're like in their 20s now so they can afford to spend a decent amount they'll buy your product if you go with us i feel i feel like it's good for disingenuous framing like that yeah which is obviously what we want to get away from in this industry because we don't need to scare off more sponsors and partners we Mm -hmm. want more good sponsors and partners and while that may reduce the value if you're more realistic and accurate about what what you're quoting and what they have access to that's better in the long run i feel and it'll be a more effective partnership and activation which could then be more fruitful in the future it may expand mm-hmm. you know yeah. so they're, they're the only reasons i can pin to it like being worthwhile as doing it yeah <laughs> scamming no, people I agree. and just a brief overview of what's what yeah exactly so i yeah so i agree that on the whole collating those stats is useful for a lot of different purposes um and i also agree though that <clears throat> orgs take those numbers to potential sponsors and things to inflate it and the the point you made about cod like you think you're tapping into this multi-million user audience market um when in reality if you sponsor atlanta fit like that's so perfect so this is why i was on my phone just then i'm gonna read a quote from my own article which i know is a bit fucking bad but well whatever. you've read one from mine so we might as well be <coughs> yeah, fully self-indulgent. Out, yeah um so on what you said I wrote, this was, I think I wrote this in January 2021, so it was a while ago, but a lot of it still stands. Some of it doesn't because Valorant has just kind of shot to the top, but I'll explain like my thoughts there anyway. Um, So I wrote, when do we expect the hundreds of millions of Western gamers that play Call of Duty, FIFA, Fortnite, Overwatch and so on that do not not currently care about esports to start caring? The answer might be that for most titles, they won't. These titles have accrued enormous player bases over many years, and yet their pro scenes lag behind. If the Call of Duty League were assessed on its own merits and not seen as part of a burgeoning ecosystem, would investors have forked out tens of millions for a spot in the franchise league? When scrutinised, it becomes clear that COD Esports is built on shaky ground. Our bunching together of the esports industry is dictating the value of specific titles, not the other way around. So basically, my point is that it's disproportionate. Like, we see it as this whole thing, and yet, again, like, the audience is heavily, heavily skewed towards League and CSGO, and now, I guess, Valorant and Rocket League's doing well. But it is still concentrated, and it always will be concentrated because some will be more popular than others. But So then, anyway, I go on to say, despite the relentlessly positive forecasts, how much of the industry will be salvageable without League and CSGO? Again, you can tweak that a bit these days. When we wax lyrical about the esports steeplechase, at least in the West, we are selling tickets en masse for a two-horse race in which one is a clear favourite. And then I mentioned that Dota is like massive and CIS still, but like that's, that's kind of a separate point for now. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
League and CSGO are, to some extent, the Western esports industry. And then I wrote, this may change in the coming years, such as the fast-paced nature of the sector. And obviously it has because you've got Valorant that's now huge, which is like the main one I can think of. And that was that was focused on the West as well. I want to clarify, because you've got like mobile titles that are just smashing it in Asia, like just fucking ridiculous viewership, like mm-hmm. just blowing even League out of the water. But um, it, even even though Valorant has done well, like it's still like CS and Valorant add them together, it's not reaching league no numbers no. at all like it's it, that really is the one place you want to be and it's the yeah. place that's probably one of the hardest to get into effectively yeah. because it's so closed off and entirely controlled by tencent effectively yeah. <laughs> well right games with your tencent so yeah and the reason i spelled it out like that i guess just to wrap up the point is mm. that like you were saying you think you're sponsoring this big thing when in reality most of the value is in league of legends in the west like that's where it is that's where almost everything else, from which everything else grows. So you've got a sponsor that wants to sponsor the CDL because they feel like, oh, it's franchise, or it might be big, or this the industry's huge, like people will be interested, we'll be able to, like you said, good good age to purchase. But like even for COD, it's already one of the biggest games in the world, and yet its esports audience is tiny, relatively mm-hmm. speaking. So there's no value there. Oh, there's 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 little value there. And is it worth what companies have spent on it? Um, I'm not so sure. And if it wasn't lumped into this collective thing, this bundle, we probably wouldn't value it the same. No. So I think that's the general point. Part part of the value in a set, or like part of the perceived value, or what dupes companies, I f- believe, may be the fact that oh well, there's no way. 12 organizations are, are banging in 25 million into a league if there's not huge plans down the line and if they don't if they don't believe it's going to be the next big thing mm. you know what i mean like there's almost like something there where it's like well there's no way they're all that stupid we're missing something here like though it's getting 100k uh, viewership now concurrent or peak even like they they must mm. have some long term fucking plan where mm. where that is <laughs> not particularly the case as we see now with Overwatch league with mm-hmm. how fucked that's been, obviously the the pandemic didn't help too much, but I mean it was it was clapped before that. But mm-hmm. I, I think there's maybe even a bit of just like, well, there's no way they're that stupid to pay sixty mil to get an expansion team in the Overwatch League. So it mm-hmm. must be sound. We'll get into yeah. that. This audience must be mad valuable that they've got right now. And Overwatch mm-hmm. Two's coming. Oh my god, that's gonna it's, yeah. gonna it's gonna blow this whole thing up. But yeah. even even if you say you get into League of Legends, a lot of the actual value for I guess like viewership on your brand and stuff. Say you're a, uh, you want to be a jersey sponsor. Is getting to worlds, MSI to a lesser degree, but all, but definitely worlds. So say you like sponsor Fnatic because mm. uh, they're huge as they are, right? But then oh, they're locked to go into worlds effectively. There's no way they're just the top team. That's that. If they miss out on that one year, like Fnatic's not at the CS:GO major right now, like mm. <laughs> that's a big fucking loss, as it is, and that's a lot of the value, yeah. which I imagine they would effectively quote numbers based on the fact that historically we're there every year. So it's pretty mm. much a lot going to yeah. get in this year. We made, we smashed it in the spring split. So therefore summer splits is guaranteed. That's that is just so many ways you can quickly erode um, like the, the overall value, I guess, and the amount yeah. of people you can actually reach, which is a bit mad. Uh, so mm-hmm. even League of Legends in itself is, yeah, it's the biggest we've got, mm. but even then it is, it's, only for a, sel- a select few, I feel like. You can bet on yeah. T1, you can bet on G2, mm-hmm. a couple of the others, but outside of that, it's, it's yeah. shaky then. Yeah, 100%. And if you compare that to like traditional sports, I mean, I don't know loads about it, but if you look at, say, the NFL, at the very least, the bad teams will have games on TV, so they'll get TV revenue. Yeah. And I think the NFL has a revenue-sharing model where they share everything that every team earns. You know, so mm-hmm. like, like even if the Patriots earn way more than the Bengals, um, they I th- I'm pretty sure anyway they share it. So yeah, I fucking hate that. I, I don't know if they still do it in Overwatch League, but they did at the beginning. Right. So when Sh- Shanghai Dragons in the first season they went zero and forty two, if I remember correctly, <laughs> they would get the same um, revenue share off of merchandise sales as. Dallas Fuel or San Francisco Shock or Houston mm. Outlaws, who are like the big ones out, out of the gate. Mm. Like, <laughs> they would get the yeah. same share. And that, that I fucking, I, I understand it from a, oh, we're all in this together point of view. But like if, if I'm contributing 
more in terms of more player, uh, more resources for players. I've got better coaching. My players are, you know what I mean? Like if I'm putting more in, I, I want to get fucking more out. I don't want to be sharing it. So yeah. I fucking hate that. But I can understand why there's, there's a positive there. It kind of like, if if the league's growing as a whole, then each each ship is getting elevated with the with the the tide right the rising mm. tide of the league I suppose. Which well, definitely there's definitely an argument for that. I guess with esports it might be a bit more difficult because none of the teams are super safe in terms of like earning earning money. Like the, I mean, being profitable definitely not. And I know they'll have sponsorship revenue as like a backwater, but um, uh, I but think yeah. it, 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 like. There's no organization you could, I would 100%, I would put like 100% of my money on as a safe bet to exist in 10 years. Mm, There's not yeah, one because exactly. it just takes, it takes one scandal, one one scandal for, I don't know, Nadeshot gets caught up in something, 100 thieves, and if it's something particularly bad, that could literally cause the downfall of the entire brand, mm-hmm. which is just, according to Forbes, like, grown more than any organization over the past two years by a, a dramatic amount mm. like i don't i don't think any team is particularly safe right now or established no. to the point where oh, there's no way we run out of money now mm-hmm. but then again you look at the Liga, like the amount of money they lost <laughs> in the La Liga. Yeah. obviously there was a pandemic going on but like 60 percent of of the loss that year which was a dramatic loss like came from one club and it's like fuck me, and I, mm. I, I assume that was either Barca or Madrid, right? So I think it Barca was were Barca. very close to things not going well, yeah. and obviously lost Messi and that. But like even yeah. the big established ones in in footy, which you see as a, a typically fruitful thing because of the TV rights, especially, it's, a, it's it can be a madness there. So I don't think it's any safer in in hashtag mm-hmm. esports. No, hashtag um, esports which, that which doesn't exist. Me. No, it's just it's just. Yeah, it's it's good for a collective term for the industry we're working. I find, mm-hmm. and that and that is about it. But like, I've yeah. never heard someone say they're like, oh, I've maybe heard a couple of people say they're a sports fan, and I immediately question it. I'm like, wait, so you watch bowling and balls mm-hmm. and darts? Oh, you a fan of dressage <laughs> as well? Like, and we, what's your favorite rugby union team? Yeah. Like, like, is you need that specific, specific, I mean, specific, you, specific, you, specific, you whatever that word do. is. There. You definitely do. I th- I do think it exists like people are big gamers so therefore they'll watch all kinds of esports that definitely exists and is a thing like that's me that's me summarized right there but like i completely agree with you like, do you watch it as a fan or someone who's interested in, in the industry I, well yeah i guess a bit of both it depends and that's the thing yeah i do actually i pay attention to a few different titles but i do still have my favorites right yeah so yeah and you're right mo- most people are fans of a title or a couple of titles at most like they're not bothered about the industry yeah um, i think we I mentioned guess... it in another uh, another video didn't we where like um there, there'll be some diehard diehard fans of organizations that do follow results across games mm-hmm. but you're not going to be able to like I don't, I don't think actively engage say like if you follow team liquid and they're in 14 titles i don't think you're going to be able to actively engage in the community of 14 mm. competitive games you know what yeah. i mean and really be what you'd call a fan Per se, you're more a fan of the team at that point. Yeah. And there's not too many of them, though, from what I can see. It seems as they're more fans of players, which is obviously very yeah, game specific, yeah. unless they're hopping from CS to Valorant, yeah. which is a, a rare thing anyway. So, And that's the thing. You hear this, like people invest in orgs because they're kind of banking on them becoming the next Man United or whatever. And so it's worth a few pennies to just throw at it and hope that that's what it becomes. But is that going to happen if, a, if an org is spread across different titles? Like, I don't know. I just feel like the reason Man United are massive is because they've been hyper successful in the most popular sport in the world. Whereas G2, they're massive. They're like relative to esports, they're huge. They're doing really well. They seem to have a real like identity across the board, like, mm-hmm. across titles, across like the, obviously Carlos and stuff. Um, but I just, I, I don't know. I'm skeptical that it can lead to the same level of fandom. If it's across different titles, like you'll have mad, you know, Fnatic in, in League of Legends is pretty storied at this point. Like, that's mm-hmm. cool. Like, they've got a legit history in that game. So you've got Fnatic League fans. But again, like, if you take Fnatic to a different... They'll have fans always. They'll always have more fans than the lesser team. But, like, is the affinity the same when you spread it across? It doesn't seem to be because, like, they're in no. Halo. 
and no nobody gives a fuck. Nobody gives a shit. I say exactly. nobody. Most people no, yeah, ignore exactly. the fuck out of it. And viewership's not really there, even though it's a, a new title. Um I think they're one of the partner teams, like they should in theory be excited, but it doesn't translate yeah. that way. It doesn't, it never does. And like I always I think I've used this example like twice before on this podcast, but like Optic. When they were in uh, CSGO, I remember this so clearly. Like when they played in COD, they have a history in COD. So the viewership just went, mm-hmm. it blew up. Every time they play, the viewership like doubles or maybe even more than doubles sometimes. Um, Counter Strike, they weren't getting, they were just getting normal views for that tournament. Like nothing changed. So, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, there's, there's only a yeah. few diehard fuckers naturally, right? Mm-hmm. It's like not, not 100% of the people that follow your Twitter account are fans per se like real fans like if you look at the word like yeah. fanatical people about your organization exactly like i probably follow stuff. i probably follow g2 xl fanatic all these and i'd say would i say i'm a fan of any of them i'm not sure i like the british ones just because i like rooting for the british teams like xl and fanatic but i'm not i'm not a fan you know what i mean mm-hmm. I don't yeah know. i don't even i don't follow a single uh team on twitter no. i have a list uh, and I haven't gone through oh, it in yeah. about a year. <laughs> Same with TOs as well, but like my, my timeline is fucking beautiful, mate. But one thing I wanted to mention that I, I think is a good trend is, um, I guess it's specifically on Twitter for the most part, but it could it could work elsewhere. Um, on YouTube, I think I'm seeing it as well, where organizations are creating new social, pla- or like new social handles for the games they're in. Mm. which makes a lot more sense to me. Say say you're G2 and you've got your, that one Twitter account to serve all of the games you're in, all of the influencers. It's very hard to engage a, a specific community there if if we're saying yeah. uh, each eSport has its own community, which it does, for sure. It's very hard. Like you, Everything has to be general and open or you're not going to get the engagement you could get effectively. like The engagement rate on a, a Valorant-specific esports twitter account versus the g2 account as a whole it's going yeah. to be very different if, if you create g2 valorant on twitter you can go super hard in how you reference things and what you post everything can be about the g2 valorant uh, yeah. team it, you can you can build better bonds with the players you can have little referential memes that people wouldn't get outside of it but in the mm-hmm. in this little inside club of g2 valorant fans they all get it. Engagement rate's going to be banging. So, like, Team Liquid yeah. have it for some of the titles they're in. I know they've got um, a Valorant-specific YouTube channel, which was doing very well, and they're, they're like, um, YouTube strategists just left to join Energy, which is, mm. is somewhat interesting. But, yeah, like, if, if Manchester United, like, entered fucking handball, just uh, <laughs> looking at it in an yeah. esports terms, if they enter a new title, yeah. which, obviously, it can't go that way, like, they wouldn't have the same fucking at and same account for everything they're in you know what i mean it'd be like it'd be individual on each one you build up you build it up that way so i understand I remember, it gets a bit messy that way of course like if yeah. if, if i want to see everything that g2 does i can't necessarily like if they go the route i just suggested then yeah it's hard to do that by following them on twitter which is somewhat an appealing thing you get to keep up with everything but i think you can get richer engagement uh, deeper fan building opportunities and also it's better for partners and stuff as well if they want to get really targeted with who they're going for yeah. if they understand they want European Valorant fans well G2's the biggest <laughs> European organisation by some metrics and they also do well in Valorant so oh look there's this, this account which is literally a hotbed of <laughs> European Valorant fans there we go. We can we can do that instead of just mm-hmm. going at the whole G two account, in which they'll charge more for because there's more followers and more impressions and stuff. You know, I, yeah. I just I think that's the trend we'll continue to see, and I think it makes sense because yeah. segmentation is nothing new in fucking marketing by any means, of course, and advertisement. No. But no. Um, I, uh, I I think it's a, a remedy to the broadness and generalization of esports. Yeah, I remember I used to be pretty torn on that. On do you split? Do you target each community? But I guess it just makes so much sense. Like you've you kind of convinced me. They're talking about it. Like if we really do believe that there are different communities within esports, then you need to target each one, and that I includes so. social media. So yeah, agreed. Maybe that's Re- what really more hard. To try and really do. hard to please all of the Valorant fans that follow G two. If you're also having to post match updates for League of Legends and memes yeah. for CSGO. Mm-hmm. And also talk about the sim racing you're doing. Like your your gen- generic main account can still retweet 
like the main stuff from each channel. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's not like they have to be entirely disconnected. I un- I understand you want everything in one place. It makes you look stronger if you've got four hundred thousand followers on Twitter instead of uh, eight different accounts with fifty k. Mm-hmm. I understand the optics there and how it looks, but I, I think it goes beyond that. And it's like, mm-hmm. okay, how do we really engage these people and, and build like real fans? Yeah. And I think I think that makes sense. So I think we'll um, see more of it. I think Cloud9 did one for their CSGO roster that they picked up recently, right? Because they bought like X Gambit. Oh, yeah. Shiro oh, yeah, and yeah, such. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they, yeah. um, their first tweet was uh, the, like the popular meme about like the the Boston Major saying don't, don't let uh, Cloud9 creating a new CSGO account distract you from the fact that FaZe blew a 15 whatever lead at the E-League Boston Major. Do you know what I mean? Like it just worked and they've maybe yeah. only got 7K followers right now, but you know those are 7K people that are interested in the Cloud9 CSGO team. Mm. And that's valuable, I think. Mm-hmm. Having that knowledge and, and kind of certainty in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. So I think um, if we're just going to kind of wrap up mm-hmm. the general topic, um I guess just in terms of a solution, <clears throat> I think in ter- in a solution to the what we might see as a problem of the esports industry being collated too much when in fact it's very separate. There are separate pillars within that. Um, I think, to be honest, executives, especially like investors, pundits, like everyone just needs to be aware of it, I think, and needs to think about it in those terms. Um, and I guess once they are, like, what happens to org valuations? What happens to the value of sports leagues? Maybe, and like I said, maybe there are pl- I'm sure there are plenty of people that are considering this, people that are responsible for partnerships at TOs and orgs and people that do invest. I'm sure plenty of them are doing this and thinking in these ways, but um, I guess generally we maybe just need to approach it more specifically if we want to actually take a legit, trustable temperature of the industry i acknowledge that it is separate and i just think people need to be more aware of it and think about it more and then from there we should make our valuations and make our judgments i think so and i i also i don't know even with valuations and stuff though i i I don't like them too much because say phase is worth a billion right which they're not but say a lot of that came from the fact they owned the franchise slot in the cdl Mm. i don't know say it was of immense value what happens if they sell that off in two, two years? Like, so, there's so many mm. risky things with with it all. You know what I mean? But you know, Man U is always going to be in football <laughs> yeah. unless the club ceases to exist. And at that point, that's a very different different thing you have to mm-hmm. deal with. But yeah. like, they're just the you, you know, I don't know, like forecasting in esports and stuff. You can't forecast the entry of a new game that comes in and just takes off like a no. Valorant, and you can't exactly. you can't forecast exactly. the loss of a an esports scene. Gears of War wasn't big, but like the coalition are stopping the competitive support there. What happens mm-hmm. if that's the case for Fortnite or I don't know Rocket League? What yeah, if what 100%. if Epic Games and Psyonix are just like you know what, like this isn't working. We will just have this casual. Yeah, you know what I mean, like, and that that fucks well, up so much looking forward. It does. That's why I'd rather keep things on a case by case basis. To be fair, yeah, it's very unpredictable, isn't it? Um, yes, <laughs> that was one. Of, that was one of the things I was going to say. Is what you just touched on there? Like, I'm sorry, mate. A new, a new t- No, no. I mean, I, I forgot to be honest. <laughs> like a new title could come around, and like the bottom line for for publishers, the bottom line, the money they earn for the shareholders and all that shit. I mean, not not necessarily shit, but <laughs> that's just the I way it is. Uh, that's always going to come before the health of an esports scene for esports' sake. You get what I mean? Mm-hmm. So there's a so the money is always going to come first, and so publishers. What happens if esports revenue slows down? Then they might release a new game that tries to be a revamp of this one that doesn't have as much of an esportsy appeal. Then all of a sudden the orgs have to drop off. Can they sign long agreements with esports orgs because that then might hamstring them and mean that they can't do what they want in terms of creative direction for new games and things like that. So it's really unpredictable and it's really like. It's just tough to call where it's going to go, I guess. Which I'm fine with. I mean, I, I imagine it's going to... Um, well, we had more conservative and reserved estimations of where it's going to be in the next few years, which I think is a, the right step. And there's going to be more consolidation and stuff, I feel. Like the Optic and Envy stuff. I, like, I found it weird at first, but I think it makes some sense now. Though I'd just bang 
everything of uh, Envy on a competitive front under Optic and then just have um, Envy as like some content lifestyle brand or something. But mm. regardless, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Man. I, I just feel specific. I can't say the word. Being specific, I, I'm having a proper brain fart today. Being specific is better for everybody mm. in the long run. Even if it fucks with your paper up front because you can, like, there's less smoke and mirrors around numbers and how things can perform and how many people you can reach. Like, you're going to be able to market to fans better, which is better for you and better for fans. Like, if we know how specifically um, games are performing in particular regions, we can... (laughs) There's so much you can do with that information, but literally, as we, we were speaking a little bit before this, like, there's not really that information out there. There's not a resource that breaks down esports title by title and then region by region and then age or anything right so and i guess that uh, there's there's so many different like stakeholders in the industry as well as not like one governing body that can just have all those numbers reported to it and then dish it out Mm. it's fragmented like a motherfucker and you have to get information across twitch and youtube and then if you go into into the easters do you and who you and whatever Mm -hmm. else they fucking watch on uh, through their bots and Oh shit! You know, it's just like I feel like having actual data. Well, I know it would it would help us in in many ways, but instead we're stuck to just saying esports billion dollar industry. Mm. That's it. Yeah, you know what I mean. And phase valued at a billion, not true, four hundred mil apparently. But even then, eh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it just feels like we're still yeah. is still a lot of maturing to do. Of course, which we know it's only like what twenty years and like. 20 years old and, and really in terms of being professional, probably 10 years old when it, it's yeah, not yeah. so much the wild west. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and, and a lot of this stuff will probably come, but I, I, I feel like it would benefit us more to, to get onto this stuff sooner and, and start being a bit more precise and, and thoughtful about how we communicate our points and try and mm-hmm. discuss games and scenes in the industry as a whole. Yeah. Agreed. Good points. But what I actually forgot I wrote that article, man. I completely forgot. And you read it yeah. out, and I was like, that's yeah, not right. well, that's, But you say uh, this year. I need to check that, by the way. I think so, yeah. That's why I saw January 22, yeah. I, I was like, so. what's a really inflammatory title? Esports fans don't exist. Yeah, I remember <clears throat> I remember seeing that for the first time. I was like, I know exactly oh, what he's going to say with that. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean. So, oh, that, that's what I was going to say. So, shall we link? So, I quoted myself, and I quoted you because we're up our own asses. Should we put both articles It's because we're the best in, resources, uh, mate, actually. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, we can, uh, we can link those. We'll put them in the, in the description box, yeah, so people can read. Because I still think, my, like, mine's a year and a half old. Yours is only a few months old. But mine still stands up fairly well if you swap out a lot of the uh, CSGO and League. It's a little bit been disrupted, but it's still not really. Mine was still... also January 2021, by the way. Was it? Yeah, I just checked. Stop it. Nah, legit. I don't believe you. 100 yeah, percent people will see it when they click it in the in the description anyway. What? So now we've just found out that the stud cannot read. Well, there you go. <laughs> and also uh, who copied who? I, I didn't copy you. <laughs> I didn't copy you, bitch. That's all I can say, man. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. No, I, I, th- I, th- I think the f- um, we both naturally arrived to that point and, and that's that's what helps. Like, yeah, yeah. And, and well, that's, that's why it's good that we have right. this <laughs> together Like, because we're both, I think, naturally arrived at roughly the same points on a yeah, lot of the, the key topics. We're the thinking man's journalists. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't even think myself anymore at the moment, to be honest with you, mate. But uh, yeah. I was definitely thinking back then, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, I might actually give it a read after at some so stage. see how fucking awful it is. No, it's good. You make some really good points. There we go. And so I'll I... lick your ass again, but there you go. It's true. <laughs> well, I always appreciate when you lick my ass, mate. It's one of my favourite things. That's a madness. Amazing. Like, Amazing. Clip that out of context. <laughs> <laughs> on that note. <laughs> well, one last thing I wanted to touch on very quickly. I think yeah. I mentioned it before, but is eSports a sport or is League of Legends a sport, COD a sport, Rocket League a sport? Like, because I think that kind of blends yeah, into it as well with the generalization sports. again of saying esport e- esports is its what its own thing. It, it is a tangible mm. product. Yeah. Well, obviously it's not. Yeah, and I'm I'm definitely guilty of saying that it is a sport. Like writing in articles that yeah, it's a sport and all that stuff. Well, that's Which, just like the typical narrative, though, isn't it? And yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's it's it's really easy to do that. Like it's 
you sound a bit like snarky on well actually individual sports within esports like you sound like a bit of a dickhead if you did that shit yeah. but maybe as as we as we go along like yeah just encouraging that at least encouraging people to think in those terms you know like yeah. i was saying before like the they really are they reflect better individual sports they really do as opposed to um a single a single entity because it's not there's a third there's a third option there actually so is esports a sport are individual titles sports or are individual titles just esports i'm i'm the last one's probably the least controversial <laughs> uh, well, you know what I mean if you just say like because the, the sport you mean technically they, yeah yeah, on the yeah, technical yeah, yeah like, I mean, there are I, benefits I, to esports being seen as sports with like the visas out in Germany and stuff where like mm. you can actually get into the country I think it's compete but I think it just makes so much sense to say that they are sports yeah and I think you know do we consider snooker and darts a sport yeah so some what's, don't what's, that's what's, the thing I mean yeah I, I, I think that's a very pointless debate personally yeah, but I, I mean, also I don't think fuck personally. Yeah, me but... neither. And like, the, who is it that did the ad? Have you seen the ad, the League of Legends ad, where it's like, um, oh, esports isn't a sport, and then all of the casters just start like oh, designing, yeah, yeah. and you got fucking quick shot. Sounds like an LEC one for, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. Uh, I I, yeah. I avoid Bullshit, LEC clips and adverts and stuff like the play. Are you because not? I clicked, are you not a league fan? Uh, I don't. I don't care for the game really. Uh, oh, I love watching it. I never play it, but I love watching it. I just don't really because I don't understand the intricacies of each like legend, yeah. I suppose they're called, but like characters yeah. in the game, like in, Champion, like I, I don't understand it. Yeah, why, why is it League of Legends? But then they're called champions. That's fucking clapped. Yeah. Um but no, so, so I'm not really into it. But like, yeah, I, I got forced to watch an LEC segment once, and it was them rapping or singing or some shit, and it was the worst thing I'd ever watched, so I refused <laughs> to give it a chance anymore because it just makes... It's like, oh, is this, if, if this is what esports is, then I'm <laughs> yeah, not I'm working not, in this fucking thing. I'm not familiar with that, but I have seen, like, LEC... The LEC does actually do a lot of, like, really interesting ad campaigns and stuff. Like, yeah, they well, they've got good do, agencies working on them. Have they? Yeah, yeah. well, it seems seem to be, because, yeah. They really, yeah, they do. They, I've, I've noticed that a lot, like ads and different activations. I mean, I'm not sure about rapping and all that shit, but like, no, they, and they, they, they have got, do rap got, battles, mate. And they've got, they have got good talent as well. Like, shock some people like that. K drill, they are legit. So yeah. that's fair. That's fair. I still think, um, yeah, I still think the game's pretty shit. But I've, I mean, I've, I've never played it, so I could, but like, CS, I, I haven't CS watched a game me. of the major yet. I haven't watched a single game in the what, major, of C- CS, CS major Go? yet. No, not yet. Yeah, no, I've not actually. That started the other that. day, didn't it? Yeah, into, yeah, yeah. We'll, and we'll I think, get into the legends like the the last stage soon, won't we? So. Oh yeah, and MSI is on as well, isn't it? I've not watched any of that either. No, I think it's I, in I'm, Korea, so it might be on now actually. Nice. But like I'm they've got they've got some teams playing remotely, and some not. Mm. So it's like thirty five ping playing some teams and stuff. It's because like really? the, cause the Asian sorts? games were supposed to be going on, and there was something around that maybe to do with um quarantining and stuff but then oh my god yeah stuff China's got pushed like back. fully locked down isn't it so is that yeah so, so uh, some players are, on, are online and some aren't yeah oh yeah which god, is obviously a, a bit of a competitive integrity threat yeah in, in my mind like because it's better than in the team so presumably only one team would have to split it between LAN and, and online if but I suppose that's better for them to just try that and see how it goes than to but like they don't have the pressure of but playing in a studio and all that shit. Yeah, you know? like, yeah true, true. Then, which yeah, may, may not be much at this point. If you fake or something, it's probably not going to bother you too much. But like, yeah, like Monte Cristo was tweeting about it uh, quite a bit. So that's where I got it from. I, I don't, mm. as I said, I'm not too up to up to scratch on the nooks and crannies there. No, but uh, that's a madness. But yeah, anyway, that's so that's episode six. That's the sixth video. It, I think yeah. I think it is wow. of Cyber Athletics. And Tell you what, son. oh, why didn't we suggest? Why not changing it from esports to cyber athletics? That should have been the the, the main mm-hmm. thing we suggested. We could if we're going to generalize, at least generalize to cyber athletics and link you to know, our YouTube channel. You know, we've spoken about the thing that definitely won't work: the Olympic style competition. Maybe we can make oh. that get funding for it. Call it cyber athletics. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'll let you take the lead on that one, mate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. I'll I'll, I'll draw up a logo in paint. That'll take me about six months, and then and then we can yeah. go from there, mate. Yeah. At least get this shit coin out first, anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> Good right, episode. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you all for watching. Uh, we'll catch you on the next one in a few days, I'm sure.